Well, it's a sad day for Castlevania fans. I'm Andrew Reiner, and we're taking a look at Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, a sequel to one of uh, what I felt was one of the better games of the year, what, two years ago. Playing today is Tim Turry. Hello. And Jeff Cork, who reviewed the game for us and brought us the bad news. I, I'm i sorry that I had to be the person to do it. <laughs> we, we were all really excited, and then we went over to your desk, and we are like, how is it? How is it? And you're like, eh. I was beyond and excited. And that just, that just got uh, worse and worse and worse, yeah. that tone. Because, yeah, when the first game I was just a huge fan of, I think all three of us really enjoyed it. <laughs> Loved it. One of and the best endings to a game. It was awesome. Yeah, Joe came and said, hey, you get to review it. And I was super stoked. And then, yeah, the game happened. And one of the things I really liked about it was the arc of getting new gear. Like, they kept giving you new stuff throughout that entire game. And the light and dark magic. Yep, and the boss battles were fantastic. I just, Jeff, what went wrong here? Uh, Several things. I think one of the biggest is, uh, I don't feel it, it took advantage of the modern day setting much. Uh, there's some incredibly frustrating stealth sections. I know that people are talking online about like this one stealth boss that you fight. And even if you do it correctly, like but pro tip, you want to use the mist form. Even then it's just a, a case of trial and error oftentimes. Hmm. Um, there's you don't feel really powerful as is uh, Dracula, which is We can we can kind of go into this yeah. as 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 it's not much of a spoiler anymore, right? So the first game ended with Dracula in what appeared to be like New York City, right? I think Castlevania City, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> the equivalent of, right? Yeah, just a big old city. So when I saw that, I was like, holy crap, he is going to wreak havoc on this world. Mm -hmm. But what you're telling me is he's just kind of a coward in modern society then. He does that. and it, Well, he does like fight a bunch of shaved werewolves in uh, like <laughs> what? that's what they look like uh, in a bunch of alleyways and streets and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, it didn't deliver the promise of, of what people were maybe thinking. And as you're saying, the gameplay that they decided to go with is one of the worst steps in this game. What about kind of, I guess, these the old days, the gameplay mm -hmm. in, these, in these times? Oh, you have like this big hub uh, castle that's kind of ruined that you explore. Um, and it does the thing where, you know, you you have like a, a mist form, like I'd mentioned earlier, that you can access, like go through grates and things like that. So it does have like a traditional Castlevania style setup where you're able to go back and, and kind of reach new areas. But uh, a lot of it is optional. So unless you're feeling like in a completionist mood, you don't necessarily have to do that. And the first game was just kind of little levels. Right. Uh, some of them are very short, a uh, little standalone kind of. I don't know what you'd call them, environments or mm -hmm. just little areas. Uh, is that part of the problem here? Is that they kind of expanded the scope and it just kind of lost? Yeah, I, th I think that the the levels are larger, but it just doesn't seem like they they have the same amount of variety uh, in them just because it is like, here's a large, totally generic looking city, for instance, you know, and you're going to be going down the same alleys over and over again. And the developer Mercury team, they had such a great handle on the combat in the first game. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the story here? Um, it's largely the same. I think you can, uh, I mean, that aspect of it is still pretty good. Uh, but the platforming, like, here you go, you got to do this swinging back and forth. And it does this thing where you're kind of glued to the platform until you aren't. Yeah, it it's, it's pretty strange. sticky. Like, he, um, yeah, it's, it's not like a... Whoa. <laughs> he kind of wants to, to you know, vel Velcro onto that. It's kind it's of Dracula. magnetized. Yeah, of course. And what are these? They're uh, angsty ways of getting power-ups. Yeah, okay. I'm assuming that's, you know, like the Gorgon eyeballs in God of War, essentially. Yeah. Well, he looks nice. Mm -hmm. I think the game looks pretty good. Snappy dresser. Um, I know people really raved about the PC version of the uh, first Lords of Shadow. Um, so I'm assuming that we probably can expect a pretty graphically impressive PC version and then, you know, good looking console versions. In these past sequences, I know it's kind of hard to keep the timeline in check. They really bleed together. Are after he was turned, right? At the end of the first game. Mm, yeah. There was yeah. like that big gap that we missed. I think like essentially between, between modern day and. Essentially, like, between the end of Lords of Shadow and its post credit sequence is, I think, sort of... But then at the same time, like, this this kid, uh, if you played Mirror of Fate, is an important character. And they kind of explain it 
in the um the there's a long kind of catch up sequence in the beginning, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So if you didn't play Mirror Fate, this game does catch you up. And I think some of the story stuff, at least leading up to Lords of Shadow 2, is interesting. I have only played maybe the first two or three hours of this, mm-hmm. um, so I don't know. I'm looking forward to trying it out. I'm going to play it. I'm a huge Castlevania fan. Yeah. Um, and this has been an important series to me, like because it's their first good, really, really good 3D game. Um, at least the first Lords of Shadow was. And one of those other pillars I was talking about from the first game were the boss battles. How are they in this one? Completely unremarkable. It's pretty much the same type of boss battles you fought. You know, Jeff, that was one of your favorite parts of the first game. Yeah, absolutely. And this one, it just feels like you're doing the same thing. If you, like God of War, here's a giant guy. You're going to climb up on these vantage points. He's going to shake you loose a little bit, Shadow of the Colossus style. Uh, you're going to climb up, stab him, ruin the mechanism that's you know working him. Or you might fight a guy who's going to jump up and he these concentric circles are going to hit you and you got to jump up over them. I don't know. There's really, it doesn't do anything you haven't done before. This is pretty damn cool right here. Little Devil May Cry-ish. Yeah. Nice. Um, is the platforming mostly the same, do you feel like? Is there is much reliance on, like, the chain whip at all? Like, is there any of that? No, not really, no. Okay. It's, it's just <laughs> finding clouds of bats and jumping onto those, Okay. looking for the next cloud of bat, or... You you impress a button, it'll highlight specifically even beyond that where your next grapple point is. Okay. Uh, And then, from what I remember, instead of like light and dark magic, it's the void sword and like these heavy gauntlets you get eventually. Correct. Yep. It does the God of War 2 kind of style thing where you end up with, you know, you have all these great weapons and you lose them and you regain them by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, let's see if I remember. All right, everything about that last minute was very cool. Was Uh, it? Yeah, I really liked it. Okay. It was exciting. Punched through a rock, and the rock reformed as this weird blood golem. Character design's very cool. You know what? Yeah. That's also something I even noticed in my first couple hours of the game. Do Most of the bosses have that sort of knockback thing where they... That, where it doesn't do damage and it just mm-hmm. creates space. Yeah. Is there, that, it's a pretty common, a lot. but yeah. Okay, because that's, wow. that was new to this one. Ran out of void. Okay, so I have to. You have to do well in combat to to recharge your your weapons. Right. So that Seems does like an ineffective okay. sword for for battle. All right. That's it. That's it. And this this what we're playing here uh, is what 20, 30 minutes into the game. It's past the demo, so I think yeah, probably a little more than that, that maybe. Yeah. So you don't, you're not going to get the like the gauntlets that Tim was talking about. Those are the set enemies on fire and they hit really hard. The void sword is a kind of a way to leech uh, health from enemies. Okay, I don't want to use that sword anymore. See everything I'm seeing here, I'm liking, but mm-hmm. obviously, well, you know, this, I'm assuming it's like a 20-hour game, Jeff. Is it? Is it? Yeah. He was playing to, it for yeah. a while. I mean, definitely, uh, yeah. it kept going and going, uh, much to his disdain. Yeah. <laughs> nice water, blood technology. Is this going to be a quick time event? Or I missed my window. What is the uh, activate like when they're staggered like that, Jeff? Do you remember what button it is to like? Is it circle? Okay. That was Jason in my ear. There you go. Nice. Okay, I remember having a cool. hard time with a quick time event, I think, in this battle. Somewhere. Yeah, one of the things that actually is done well is you have the option of turning quick time events off. Oh, that's so pretty cool. You're so just what fed up then? with it. You just see the action. Okay. You just have no input then? Yeah. Do they? Uh, does that affect achievements or trophies or anything? Uh, I don't know. I, I kept them on while I was reviewing. Oof. What does that mean? Blood is what? Go for the blood. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that that little flash of red indicates that I can't block that move. I have to dodge. Yeah. Get out of there. Oh, spiky stuff. Okay. Learn new stuff. All right. <laughs> the first game was pretty tough. Uh, how does this one kind of stack up on the difficulty level? Do they kind of keep it consistent or make it more challenging? It's, or it's pretty reasonable. I think the stealth sections are just beyond terrible. Um, 
the combat gets pretty monotonous, even though you do eventually unlock a, a pretty vast system of combos and upgrades, you know, as you play through. Uh, you can, if you want, just rely on a, you know, fairly uh, basic strategy and get through, you know, you're not really incentivized to... Get out of there! Are you kidding? really good at it. Oh, sorry. Cool. That lasted forever. Yeah. What's, what's that? This guy has every trick. Yeah, he's really pulling out the stops here. I'm going to stop him by pulling out his heart. Do it. And how are they telling the story, Jeff? Is it from, like, old Dracula reminiscing about the old days, or...? No, it's primarily them just laying it on for Going back and you. forth, back and forth. Oh, that's much better. I, had uh, some I like that. I had some problems with that during the preview build. They must have tightened that up a little bit. Or you just did a lot better. All right. You did well. Yeah, well done, dude. Thanks. All right. Okay, oh, yeah, well, let's yeah. see this. Do you yeah. want to take a look at this? Okay, the book's back. So these are kind of like skill tree things, from what I remember. Mm -hmm. did you... A nice little bell that they recorded for this. Mm -hmm. What route did you go for this, Jeff? Uh, initially, just uh, the shadow whip, because that's kind of your bread and butter weapon, and mm -hmm. then uh, put a lot of points into the void sword and then went to the gauntlets. So by the end, it was pretty evenly matched all throughout all the trees okay so so i'll put some money into the whip there combined whip rising whip so i'm assuming this is sort of a juggle an air juggle thing get it in the air yeah hold yeah that's that's a good one i've always liked the presentation of the skill book there it's yeah, pretty cool yeah. a little animation that shows you what you're getting into and what are they is there anything like side content like that uh where you can earn more experience or souls, or whatever these are. Yeah, they're the, those those blocks of pain that you jam your arm into, like with gems that in, you know increase your health gauge or your uh, your magic gauge. But is there like additional environments you could go back to to get more stuff? Uh, you can go back to your castle, yeah, and explore that. So once you unlock new moves, like kind of like the first game, you can go back and Zelda esque, you know, or Metroid esque, you know, unlock new areas. I think we'll call it Castlevania esque. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To a certain degree, it's not, um, yeah, like I said, there's not a, like a tremendous incentive to go back. Gotcha. Let's see. I feel like I'm missing something around here. Um, Did dude drop anything? His head. There it is. Uh, subtle. Uh, okay, I remember this. I think I'm going to freeze, uh, freeze the waterfall here. So you feel like do you feel like the stealth was the biggest misstep the series took with this one, or what was your biggest di disappointment? Uh, biggest disappointment, I think, just the overall package. It just didn't feel like it was put together especially well. Um, the stealth is just abysmal. Uh, that's you've got the two different flavors. You know, traditionally you you turn into a pile of rats and go into vents and avoid these uh, like space marine looking guys who will destroy you on site. It's like an instant fail state. They <laughs> just sounds so weird. Yeah, it, it's completely terrible because you know, like one moment you're, you know, defeating a this incredible looking hydra and then the next thing you know a guy with a gun kills you if he sees you. Um yeah. And they're like miniature puzzles. They're not especially well designed. I mean, there's like a trick to them. Once you figure it out, you got it. Okay, so you feel like the puzzles were a step backwards from the uh I mean, they're bare, they're not really even puzzles. It's just a matter of like, oh, I got to chew this wire to prevent this electricity okay. from stopping me from going this one path, and now I've got to possess a guy to open a door. What did, what would you say to the people who just really enjoyed the combat from the first one? You're saying it's pretty much the same package. The combat is pretty good. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little bit deeper, and if you enjoyed that, uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to tolerate wade the other through stuff, a lot right? of other stuff. Yeah, between the combat, yeah. So still a competent fighter, but everything around it and uh, yeah, just kind of the package of it all. Yeah, the contemporary setting is is not great. I think the enemy designs are pretty weak. Uh, yeah, it was just a disappointment overall. And like I said, I absolutely adored the first Lords of Shadow. I think it was a fantastic game. It, it, and that was a case of it doesn't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel. I think it was just a really solid, you know, action game in the style of like God of War or Devil May Cry or something. And I think this just kind of relies on what it did in the first game. And then some 
I guess, bad ideas for, I guess, their big kind of uh, uh, reveal at the end of the last game. Then. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we won't continue across these rafters all the way. Uh, if you want to play it yourself, go do it. It's out today on Xbox 360 and PS3. 3, yes. And it's out on Steam too. So uh, it's out there. I guess, Jeff, what would you say to, to people? What'd you give I mean, it? If I gave it a six. Okay. I mean, obviously, people are going to play it if they want to play it. I can't stop them. Enjoy. But there are better games. There are definitely better games available <laughs> right now. Yeah. All right. That's going to end this test chamber. And uh, as always, see you next time, everyone. <laughs>